B-Side Word. Hey, and welcome to the B-Side Word. We're a group of friends from around the world. We share our thoughts on second page news. I'm Emma. I'm here with Dev. Hello. CJ. Hello. Maxi. Hello. And Alexander. Hey. Okay. So, my article is... It's not really second page news. I have held on to this article for a little bit. So when I found it, it wasn't sort of at the forefront, but I think you guys have probably heard of it now and uh, maybe a lot of our listeners. But it's just about the um, collegiate scam that's been happening in the US. Has anyone heard of it? No. You haven't? I haven't. Alexander? I've heard of it, but... Maxi? I could... I. I could yeah. use some more details. Okay. So recently there's been a federal indictment of almost 50 people, including administrators, coaches, um, parents, for their roles in offering and taking bribes to gain fraudulent admission of students to elite colleges. So Stanford, Yale, Georgetown, for instance. So one particular case, her name is Isabel Enriquez. And she's the daughter of a CEO of Hercules Technology, Growth Capital, okay? Now, so the CEO, Manuel, he really wanted his daughter to get into one of these top universities. He he wanted to get her into Georgetown. So he approached this guy called something Singer. I forgot his first name. Uh, William Singer. Singer, I think. I think William, William Singer, yeah. So he approached William Singer. Now, William Singer is like a dodgy college coach, basically. And he does he works with like a lot of these people. So what happened is they paid him, I think, $425,000 US dollars. Um, uh, let me just have a look. Okay, so just for one of it. So they paid him, I think, like nearly half a million dollars to try and get the daughter into the college. Now, this guy does stuff like arrange fake um, fake SAT exam testers. So, you know, like he'll go and sit the test for them, etc. But in this case, they paid for a fake proctor to sit next to their daughter, Isabel, and basically correct her answers on the SATs. But he did it like inconspicuously. And through doing this, it improved her best score by 320 points. So she got 1,900 points out of 2,400 points. Now, that still wasn't enough to get into Georgetown. So he's like, all right, what can we do next? So he gets good old Singer here to approach the tennis coach at Georgetown and pays him 900,000 US dollars to, yes, so basically almost a million dollars to get him to take Isabel onto the tennis team. She hasn't played tennis in her entire high school. She hasn't played since she was like under 12s, basically. And he got to take her, he got her, he got him to admit her onto the tennis team. Okay. Now the way that she got caught is because she was gloating on camera about cheating to get in, which is ridiculous. But that's that's how that's how that got caught. <laughs> but, okay, I, I'm understanding why he had to pay so much to get his daughter in. Because she was stupid. <laughs> but basically, it's such a scam. She actually had to rewrite her application to Georgetown. And in her application, she said she practices three to four hours a day of tennis. She does 20 hours a week of um, club tennis, which she never does. Um, she'd won something like this uh, US Tennis Association, all academic. She was in the all academic team and in the top 50 high schools. And, st- and she hadn't done any of this, basically. Um now, obviously, af- after she's been found out and this whole thing's going down, he's stepped aside as CEO. So now he's lost his position as CEO. Um, and But the fact is, they're only one of 50 people involved in this. So this is huge. The list goes on, including celebrities. Does anyone watch Full House? Yes. Yeah. You do, right? Yeah. The actor Laurie Lachlan, she played Rebecca. You do, right? Yeah. <laughs> she <laughs> played Rebecca on Full House. She has been indicted. Because she did the same thing with her, with two of her daughters. I think one was Isabella, one was maybe Olivia or something like that. But she basically sta- got someone to, I don't know if it was the singer guy. Oh no, she got a photographer to stage them being as though they were like um, experienced coxswains. 
Do you know what coxswain is? That sport? It's like the long rowboats. Yeah. <laughs> so they like staged a photograph of them in like an ergometer or whatever and did this whole elaborate thing saying their experience and they'd never e- they were not even on a on any sort of just, just coxswain for, team. Just for curiosity, can't they just get enrolled and the parents pay the fees to get them in? That happens as well. So you'll find like CEOs or wealthy people paying seven figure, sometimes eight figures to build a building on a college, yeah. like on a college to get them in. Like, but it sounds like, wouldn't that be easier than going f- through all of this? Maybe they're my, not my that whole, rich, but. My, yeah, my whole question really is if you're willing to pay a million to get your kid into university, have you lost sight of the purpose of university? Because I feel Majorly. like that you could just give them the million and that would give them more of an advantage in life ever than a degree will. Except for that guy whose daughter's that stupid to get caught after <laughs> she got him in. Like, seriously, that young lady? <laughs> What she are they going to gain from college? Box. Like that a know? million just wouldn't give them anyway. I think it's a status thing. It's right? a status thing. So a lot of them, it's it's if you but if your again, child doesn't get accepted into one of these first degree colleges, but, it's like shame. Uh, but again, you uh, to me that's losing sight. Status of what? Like a billionaire has more status than a degree holder. Like why? Why do? We, this is why I don't understand the purpose of them even going to university. Yeah. If they're, they're clearly not going to get anything out of it academically if they can't get in to start with. <laughs> so there's no point yeah, in that. Yeah, I get 100%. <laughs> I totally agree with you. But in their heads, they're like, they have to go there because if they don't go there, it's like, it's kind of shameful. Like they're, they're second rate and they'll get a second or third tier job, basically, is what they're thinking. They want to, they think that the best careers come from these elite colleges. Now, I did some research on this. And um, there was a book and it's uh, in 2017 It's a book. It's called Degrees and Pedigrees and it examined the educational histories of 344 of US, US's highest profile chief uh, CEOs, basically. And what it found is that from 97 percent. Sorry, from the 344 CEOs that they sampled, 97% graduated from college, but only 36% of the executives earned a college degree graduated from, uh, that earned the degree graduated from one of those elite colleges. Only 36%. Um, That's still pretty high. You cut, you cut out. You cut out. I missed that. Okay. I don't so, know what you said. Okay. So there was a sample of 344 CEOs, right, taken. Yeah. From those CEOs, 97% graduated from college, but only 36% Mm -hmm. of those earned a college degree um, from one of the top 50 colleges in the US, okay? In every CEO category, except the ones that are presidents of those elite colleges, none of them were from um, an elite institution. This is what I'm saying. Like, I feel like... You go to college for a reason. And if, if you're bribing your kids into college with nearly a million dollars, you've lost sight of that reason. And like, just, it literally makes no sense. And not Unless just that, they, you're throwing away a million dollars because your child wasn't smart enough to go in, so they're not going to be smart enough to survive. Yeah. I, I, I feel that That's the you, parents are trying to, like, because they know their kids aren't probably talented enough or smart enough, they're doing everything they can in their power to give them the most chance in life. Like, because they're going to be, if they don't do anything, they might be way behind the eight ball. So they're not going to be behind the eight ball. If their yeah, parents are the going to afford to spend a million dollars, they're not going to be in, there. I mean, when that's... the parents aren't there anymore, right? They're going to have their parents' money. D- okay, let me CSC, give you an example. Right. So, so like, they're going to give the uh, j- like. A million dollars or even five million dollars is not going to be enough for them to live off. If they're not that smart, yeah, but five million dollars will just go down the drain. So you're thinking about it from uh, your life, your life um, experiences, knowing that money is going to run out. So you're going to use the money wisely. I'm talking about thinking about from an 18 year old kid that's all of a sudden like, let's say the parents die, right? They, they're probably hoping. That's Can, during Georgetown, okay. they're going to like experience w- something w- that's going to click in When you have in that in. much money, you can put it in your will. They, they get like an annual fund and the rest gets done for interest. Um, uh, what I was going to say was the... Oh, if, yeah. to, I'll give an example of a family who to me has done what you should do when you have money as opposed to going to college. The Kardashians. 
Look at the success they've generated. You don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think you need to be smart if you have five million dollars to survive the rest of your life without. Yeah, like, I don't, agree. I don't. Th- I don't think you need to be smart at all. By the way, just so we understand this scoring system, if she got an extra three hundred and twenty points and she got a nineteen hundred, she could have easily gone to college. Like that was not a problem. Not oh. she Georgetown. Could have gone to an elite college. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I. I got an eighteen eighty, and I had some Ivy League schools considering me. Oh, okay. So I got yeah. less than what she did. So it's not like. But she only got nineteen hundred because idiots. someone someone got pushed her. Yeah, pushed she would have. That's she what I'm saying. She, Emma said she got an yeah. extra three hundred and twenty points, which yeah. means she got uh, what a fifteen eighty. Like yeah. you get into college with a fifteen eighty. Oh, okay. Easily. Okay. But it's just not elite. Um, so uh, I'm curious for you if you have a kid who's uh, even if they're not even if they're not the most smart kid or whatever, and you have a million you're going to invest in them. How would you do it? Would you send them to college? Me. Yeah. No. Because you're talking about being in the mindset of these people, so be in the mindset of these people. What would you do? I probably would send them to college, but I wouldn't cheat to do it. Not a million though. No. Okay. But I guess the, the the thing is that I'm assuming this if these this family has a lot more than a million. Yeah. Like that's not a big deal to mm. them. Yeah. And my thinking, like when all of this, like I think they know that if they want their kid to make a lot of money in life, that this might not be the best way to do it. That's not the point of them sending them to a college. I think when you're at that level, a lot of it is just about your front and your appearance as a family. So they want uh, okay. to seem like their kids can get into the best schools because they are this amazing family. It's almost like this front 100%. they have to put on. In the same yeah. way where that rich person can also tell you, I don't have to live here. It's not that much more convenient for me to live in this area, but by living in this area, it looks like I'm one of the best, richest people in the world. But it's like, the best you get to a, a level where it goes past just what money... You reckon it's legacy? You don't pass just how much money you generate. Yeah, it's, it's more about your reputation your, uh, and yeah, the legacy the name. you leave and stuff. Yeah. Because th- that young lady See, going that, to college was not good for her. No. That's where I think that we've... That's why I think when it comes to university, like what you're saying, Maxi, spot on. But like to me, going to an Ivy League university, for example, isn't that... Like that doesn't mean that much to me. That's not that impressive. And yeah, it sh- I don't but think to it these people it is. To the world. Well, we so don't, we're not in those circles But that's though, what right? I mean. When I talk about we lose... When I, I know people in those circles. That's what yep. I mean. When I talk about we lose sight of, we lose sight of things. Like, it's so much to the point that going to a university and getting a degree is a status symbol rather than realizing the point of going to university to start with. Yeah, hundred percent. So according yeah. to Forbes, they're saying you know this it's become the holy grail basically for many families um, that have bought into the notion um, that their children's success in life is guaranteed by um, graduating from one of these elite institutions. So that's why they go and do it, basically. But I feel like your success in life is guaranteed if you're that rich anyway. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely. <laughs> have, you seen the, um, have you seen the Bill Gates uh, daughter analogy thing about how politics works at that sort of level? No. No, go on. So there's, 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 a, there's a dad and he has a son and he says, I'm going to choose the girl that you're going to marry. And he's like, no, you're not. And he says, yeah, but it's Bill Gates' daughter. He's like, okay, I'll marry her. <laughs> and then he goes up to Bill Gates and says, can my son marry your daughter? And he says, uh, no, of course not. He goes, yeah, but my son is the CEO of the world's biggest bank. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and he goes to the world's biggest bank and he says, Hey, um, can my, my can my son be the CEO of your bank? And he's like, No, of course not. He goes, Yeah, but he's married to Bill Gates' daughter. And he's like, Oh, okay. No so way. So now his son is married. Yeah. It's not obviously true, but it just gives you an idea of people choose these things, so you get a status right. that gives you access to right. things which which you wouldn't have otherwise. And you're right, Alex, that I, it is the wrong way to think that because he's from the Ivy League, he's a better person. But people do think that way. Yeah. So you play the system. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like the system, how long I agree, is broke in lots of different ways. See this? But yeah. if you play the system, you play the system. All right, so I've got another tweet for us. This one is by Zambian Influencer. That's at Z Influencer. Now, this one's a bit of a thread. Um, I won't go through all of it, but I'm just going to give a little bit. Now, just... Just before we get into it, when was everyone born here? Before that. 84. What year? 82. 82. So that is that the oldest? 82? Yes, yes I am the oldest. <laughs> okay. I hate I, you all. I think, in my opinion, I think you fall into this anyway, even though it doesn't say 
you particular. So we're all why, partners. Why do you say I fall into it? I think you fall into this group of people. I don't fall very easily. Let's get let's get into it and see. Uh, let's get it. <laughs> so the tweet says, people born between 1985 and 1995 are the most unique generation of all time. Here's why. They're an in-between, they're in between two generations, the one before the internet and technology took over, and the generation after. The generation before us was old school and believed in working hard. The generation after us believes in working smart. We saw it all. Radio, TV, Mario, Wattrick, Nokia, Nintendo 64, Samsung, iPhone, blah, blah, blah. Um, the generation before us can be scammed with simple emails asking for money and offering love. The generation after us knows it's better to have four emails, one for serious stuff, social media, financial transactions, and one for experiments for things you don't trust. And basically, this thing just goes on and talks about how we're in a unique position because we're almost like a transition generation mm. where we did experience the pre- internet and technology culture but then we were also grew up then having that technology thrust onto us as we're growing up yeah um, and i just i love talking about this because i do think we have an extremely unique perspective but I, then i also think about is this going to be a continuing trend like is every now generation going to be significantly different because of the rate of growth of technology and things i guess so but we were like the start of the big technology boom. Not the start, like we were just like, you know, yeah, we were in the start of it. No, I think ours was the biggest transition. Yeah. Like, but the future generation or the one the couple belief whatever beneath us are gonna think, no, we we were because when we were young, they only had iPods. Like, what the heck? But for us, we had big box TVs. Like we still had record players in the house we had a record player didn't we yeah we had yeah. your uh vcrs we had tvs that you had no remotes you had to actually get up and yes turn the knob i feel like i feel like the uh the transition between having no tech at all and having tech would have been a big transition yeah as well. which was what we were no 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 i'm talking about having no tv and then having tv would yeah. have been a big transition yeah, so like well. our grandparents okay that was a big transition <laughs> <laughs> actually our parents probably no, not our parents. Yeah, our parents. My, my parents. Be our, our, grandpa older. our grandparents. Oh, our grandparents. Not not your parents, though. No, no, no. Grandparents. No, not so our like parents. People, uh, sort of early 1900s, and then they get When did, when did, when did TV come out? When, did, when was TV invented? Yeah. I'm not sure. I want to say early 1900s. No. What? Before the First World War? No I reckon, way. I reckon like, like, maybe like 1920 or something. TV. Let's have a look. 1927. 1927. Yes. When nice. was it affordable <laughs> for people to buy? Oh, wow. That's very... 47. 40s, 50s was when it became more mainstream, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, so our, like, most of our parents wouldn't have even had a TV because they couldn't afford it. How old are your parents? 40s, 50s? Nah, they're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> I but like, like when you look at like, so like where they us, lived in Malta, it was like a, like a big luxury item, which not people can afford. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Most likely the same in the for, Philippines. Yeah. For us, I definitely think like what Emma was saying, we, we did go through a big, a big transition because think like the internet became mainstream during not just the internet, but the, also then the access of having mobile devices in your hands and all these different things. Like yeah. if you went to the mid nineties, most people our age probably hadn't even been on the internet, period. Like, yeah. ever. Yeah. And now it's something that we're on for hours a day. Yeah. Um, it's another tool, isn't but it? But then, at the same time, as you said, like, kids are going to look back at... Like, so imagine kids were born in the 2000s, and they grew up with all these things, but then, by the time they're 30, 40 years old, like, what is the world... What's the landscape going to look like? How different is it going to be? That freaks me out every time. That freaks me out when I ask um, apprentices how old they are. They go, I'll go, when were you born? And they go, 2002. And I go, what? Oh, my God. <laughs> 2002? Like, that's so young. Okay. And then yeah. I feel like they think we're really old if we say we were born old. in the yeah. 80s. They think we're old. Yeah. Who do you think lived a better lifestyle? People back then or now? Back then. Oh, man. We did back then. No, are you talking about our back then? Yeah, when... but before all this stuff actually came in. 
We did. But then our grandparents would say, no, back, back when in I my was day. a young un. <laughs> your, your sheep grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> they were sheep farmers. Leave them alone. Back in my day. <laughs> when I had my herd. We used to make our own tabletop spinners. All our, all our grandparents were sheep herders. <laughs> Oh, is there man. anything you did you guys, you did you guys play Bade Blades when you Yeah no. my, my kids do. The what? The kids they play uh, they play Beyblades. Tarzos. Tarzos was our thing. What's Tarzos? Hang on. Was Beyblades around when you were young? Did you Pops. say did we used to? Or do we now? Yeah. Beyblades when I was like, in secondary school. I, I, when when I were saw you Beyblade, born, it was like crazy technology, but it wasn't technology. When That's was thought, when was Maxi time. born? In the nineties, I reckon. Ninety. Ninety three. Ninety three. See, wow. see, see. Ninety three. You're but a baby. I'm like ninety three. <laughs> I was watching. It seems so young. I already watched one premier. Was it the Broncos first first premiership or second? Man, so much had already happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I oh. did not realize that Beyblades was. Around, I thought this only just came out a couple of years ago Ooh, when nah, Aiden asked. Nah, what about nah. Beyblades? You know when the ones that you spin it? It's on the ripper. You're on the ripper, and they and they go into a dome, and they verse and they another fight. Beyblade. <laughs> no idea. Oh. It's basically a spinning top that you make fight with another spinning top. Oh, oh there you go. By using a mechanism. That's why it. I said it because you said about spinning top. Yeah, I literally had no idea they've been around forever. Oh, okay, there you go. I'm gonna bring back the spinning top and verse Aiden in Beyblades. You know the ones that you got to get the uh, rope around it? Oh, and then go. the good old wood ones. Oh, yeah. But thinking like even if you take if you take the 90s, for example, like Niall, um, for listeners, this, this song I sort of mentor, he was born in 1999, which is, I was born in 1990, same decade. But then the experience of him growing up is so significantly different in the, the one, the example I always use is YouTube. YouTube came out when I was 15 years old. So at that point, I'm not saying I'm a fully formed person, but you know, I have a lot of opinions already formed on all these different things. But he was born in the same decade. He was six years old when it came out. Five years old when it came out. I was so 20. Like that, that's, I would have been older. Pardon? I was 20, that means, when it came out. Yeah. I it came been out in 2005. So when you look at how 20s. that shapes a person, like we were talking earlier about how TV can shape you. Like, so th- things like the internet and YouTube and all these different things just by being born a few years later, it can completely change the outlook on your life. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. But I think life was a little bit more simple, a little bit more enjoyable back in those days. Uh, do, you, do you think that? Or are we just remembering? Are we trying to remember that it was well, like... Well, it was good? definitely simpler. Yeah. yeah like, these days, it's hard to say more enjoyable though, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard, hard to say more it's enjoyable because it's enjoyable. very You, you spent more time subjective. actually communicating to people. That's I would true. say compare... Like, a, I would say from a comparison standpoint, you might perceive it to be more enjoyable because back then you didn't have other things to compare it to. Yeah. yeah. Versus now, whatever you do, you've always got a constant comparison. It, I understand what CJ's talking about. That feeling. It's yeah. that feeling that it was like, it was more enjoyable. No, it, it, it definitely felt. Like if you wanted to have a conversation with someone, yeah. like you most likely go see them. Why right now you most likely would text them. Well, back in my day, let me mm. just say, if I wanted to go see my friend, <laughs> in my day. I had to get on my bike or use my two feet and walk to my friend's house and say, hey, is uh, such and such home? How you walk? <laughs> <laughs> you, might use Ari- you might use Alex's suction hands. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, like children these days, you don't see them like closing off the street, playing soccer in the um, but we, road. We, we had this discussion and it's like, is it worse that they're not doing that? Like, because we're we're only comparing it to when we used to do it. Yeah. Was it better? Is it is it better that they stay indoors more? Like, I don't but, know. But, I just saying indoors more now because it's not as safe as it used to be. Um, my sister, oh. who is twelve, goes out a lot still, and all of her friends go out a lot still. Like, it still happens. I think. Um, hmm. Like my. Uh, her, her and her friends at least I mean, that's a very small sample size maybe but her and her friends would rather like they play out until they're allowed to play out until like five six o'clock dinner time and then they come back and then they do all the other stuff yeah like my my sister will get pretty bored if all she was allowed to do was stay in on her 
yeah. cabins and stuff. So like there is that, um, I think kids still crave going out and doing stuff and yep. being kids. Yep. Um, I just don't know. So if I don't we... think it's completely lost yet. I don't no, know. I don't think it is. And it, it depends where you live because there has to be other kids around. And just just what well, from what, what Max is saying, like it's hard to uh, overwrite the DNA that's been instilled instilled in us over like centuries. Like uh, we're still uh, like there's still, we still have some sort of animal instincts that just we want to express and see how far our bodies push, and we still want to jump and and like kick balls and run as fast as we can. You know what I mean? Like the kids, we see our kids, mm-hmm. and there's there's like. They get bored of the the Nintendo Switch and they just start running as fast as they can around the house, mm-hmm. and it's just like and and Nate just jumps off like the like from one couch to another. So there's something inside instinctively that we just want to still express stuff like majorly, but and try. I've stuff. also seen like on the news like children who are just playing Fortnite from morning to night. Mm. Yeah, I don't like that. I think but... I think that's more rare than it is commonplace, so. That's why it's on the yeah. news. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, something you just said there, Dev, I always look at, I always find this fa- fascinating. You know, um, ki- like you're talking about physical One expression. One minute warning. What was like that? Kids, physical expression. Like you see kids do it all the time. Like they just move their body yeah. in weird ways. But uh, as an adult, like I can see that. And I know exactly what's going on because I was a kid. But we don't do that as adults. Like no. you just... You, you, we're so conditioned to hold I ourselves back. I just floor. wonder if you, if you allowed yourself to physically express how kids do, and just didn't care, yeah. just like when it happened. Oh, just did I'd it. love to see like a, mate, would, like, uh, a gif or something. Can you in the middle of the office and you're just like? But I wonder how that would impact. <laughs> like, do you think we'd be happier people if we did things like that? Like, keep... yes. Like, I just wonder how that would affect us if we just started expressing like kids do. Yeah. Do you think we are uh, the most unique generation? As it stands nope. now, I think so. Wow, that's two responses, and they're <laughs> totally <Yeah>. opposite. <laughs> <laughs> no, and yeah. Well, who would you say is the most uh, unique, Maxi? I would say, in living in England, I would say the most unique in terms of like overall would be the people coming out of world wars would have been a much different change of living than mm. people during world war technology. Yeah. Are you like thinking about you, people if you who were born with a war and then you grew up with the war and when you was like 13, the war stopped? Like that would be a weird life. Or yeah. vice versa, yeah. if you grew up with no war, then suddenly the rest of your life was a war. Like that's a, that's a, I don't know. I would guess that's a very unique situation to be in. Yeah. And no, our, our parents up, have even have been through what we've because been through. And you more. can't, you know, you can't eat too much food because of this or you can't use too much steel. You can't do these because that, that's all used for the war. You, so you're very like, and then all the women are at work, and then all of a sudden the men come back, the women get put back not working, you're now allowed to eat as much as you want. Wow. Like that experience is a very drastic, wow. big, unique situation yeah. to be in, I'd argue. Yeah, do, okay. Do you, do you feel like during during that period, Maxi engineering was it like at its at its peak? Like engine like being um engineering. The ingenuity of engineering. Yeah. Because of the rarity of metals and, and all that kind of stuff, they had to like really think about what they did. And make sure they didn't stuff it up. They, they they had to like have in their head like it has to work because I only have two chances at this. <laughs> this has yeah. to work. Like I think from a mechanical engineering sense, that was probably yeah the most innovative yeah. period we've had. But now like war still happen, but it's all done technology wise instead of mechanical. You know, yeah. everything's done on a code. Does this. Okay. Before it was like, how do we make this Spitfire the most agile, fastest plane there was? And that was like all mechanical and all about how the driver can have all the feelings and stuff. And it was really man and machine stuff, you know? So that would have been like the best time to be a mechanical engineer. But nowadays, the innovation of engineering obviously is is going up at a rate which has never been done before, but that's because oh. of technology. Okay. So do you, so think, I, do you think it even, um, the, it'd be more, it'd be more of an exponential curve if there was some sort of scarcity? Like they'd have to like, does that make sense? Yeah. Like putting yeah, limits, uh, putting limits on what they, they like. I don't know. Like you know what I mean. Like I think abundance. I think abundance makes more exponential because then you have the input from people. Like if you have a scarcity, then there's only certain people working with the materials. 
Mm-hmm. Whereas if you have an abundance, then you, uh, anyone can work with them. And it's it's oftentimes that people who aren't trying to advance certain things advance those things. Mm, okay. So, um, but I, to- I did have a question, the, the perspective thing, which I, which this is going to completely expose my lack of knowledge of history and wars and whatnot. But just thinking about from a generational perspective, like where where I see, I guess, today is more of a unique perspective is that it's our entire generation. And again, I may be way off base with this, but like in my head, when I think about war, for example, like I picture people in, like a lot of people in the UK, for example, that didn't experience war, even though war was going on, they didn't actually experience it because it wasn't happening where they were. If that makes sense. So like if, the for world example- wars. This is what I'm saying. I have, I'm telling you, I'm saying this from a, a very uneducated position. But like, for example, like- it, it, Yeah, in, but it, it would have impacted them in other ways. In Scarborough, affected by war? Yeah, because it impacted them because their the husbands and the brothers and stuff were still called to war. Therefore, there was less men around. It was a massive change and they still had rationing. And it was mainly the women that then had to go to work. Think of grandma and granddad. When they were children, they were they lived through the war, but they got sent away. Um, I'm pretty sure grandma's told us stories of these. She was sent away as a child during the war. And then when That's, it was over. No, she wasn't. Grandma Margaret. Yeah, no, she was. Well, uh, I I remember her telling the story of when her dad came back from war and she was at home. Well, she could have been. She could have gone home, but all that you've seen the videos, all the children on the trains going, you know, getting sent away out of like. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I'm okay. not educated in history at all in this perspective. That's interesting. I don't know. I could be wrong, but it definitely does impact far and even if there's no war happening like where you live, if you're still called to war, you must go. Therefore, it has an impact. Yeah, in no, that, I was just curious. I was just curious of like if, Trump. if it does impact a whole country just because that country is at war. Yeah. So actually, thinking about it, I reckon uh, the grandparents' eras have seen the biggest change because they did live through the wars, but they're still like, say, well, our granddad is eighty-five and he's on Facebook and he's on WhatsApp and stuff now. So he's had like, do you know what I mean? But yeah. The different the difference between and I think what this tweet points out quite well is that they've experienced these things that we've grown up with but they don't actually like they're not integrated Interact into with the it. systems like we are mm. like as i said like an older an older person could fall for an email scam really easily like that shows how far out they are from mm. actually understanding what's going on i understand you yeah. mm. like the nigerian but no, I, the, the war thing i think is fascinating i never even mm. considered that I'm undecided now. I can't. I don't have an opinion because I didn't live through a war, so I can't. <laughs> yeah. So my article for this week is titled "Japan Offering Discounted Funerals, Food to Drivers Who Give Up License." Wait, does that make sense? Can you say that again? Oh, I didn't discount- make sense. Discounted yeah. food and funerals. It, but, uh, okay, maybe that's what it's meant to say. Japan offering discounted funerals and food to drivers who give up license. Yeah, that makes What's sense. Specific... This is another <laughs> one so of for, their forget, initiatives. <laughs> yeah, forget your grandparents getting one dollar off meals at Denny's. In Japan, elderly drivers pose such a threat to public safety that cities are offering a slew of discounts to stop them from driving. Although cheaper meals are on the per- are one of the perks, the strangest benefit is discounted funerals. Okay, but when you're dead, you're not paying the bill, so why would you care? Nah. Okay, so get this. <laughs> According to this article, um, your immediate family members also receive the discount if you uh, voluntarily hand in your license. So it's basically, not on <clears throat> or not on, no, it's not on everything. It's on those companies and things that that are taking part. So basically, they're. Um, Accidents, incidents, uh, car incidents are on the rise with elder, specifically with the elderly. And there's a lot of fatalities that occur. Um, for instance, I think they had this guy, this wasn't a fatality, but still, he, this guy like drove into the front of a shop, whatever mart, and injured two people <laughs> and then still like winds his window down or something and ask the, the checkout person um, to, if he can have a packet of cigarettes. Why? Where was this? In what? Japan. <laughs> hold on, anyway. hold on, hold on, hold on. That's confidence. <laughs> the man's that's, crashed that's confidence. into the building. Yep. 
then rolled down his window. Yep. <laughs> he thought it was right, a drive-thru. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, wrong, wrong what, did he roll down okay, his window? I made up no, the no. window bit. I don't know about the window. Uh, uh, but uh, either uh, way, he, yeah, he, he I'll crashed. Tell you what, <laughs> it's Japan. He put his powered windows. If he's, if he's willing to jet, it makes sense for him to get some cigarettes, get some trade value. <laughs> He's just thinking ahead, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, Meanwhile, there's two injured people. And I he, could, you <laughs> know when you said put the window down, all I could hear in my head, all I could yeah, it could have been. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Oh Can I please have a pack of the cigarettes? I think he must have rolled down the I've window. Got, I've got the picture in my head as he's rolled it down like... Yeah, one of those long lights just falls from the ceiling. <laughs> 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 yeah. And he both. doesn't bat an eyelid. <laughs> it's like an insurance. It's an insurance commercial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like. It's an insurance commercial. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyway, so basically these incidents are happening, but a lot of them are actual, actually fatal. Okay. Um, so <laughs> they've apparently in Japan, when you're elderly, I don't know what age, you, you've got to retake your test. But if you don't think that you are able to pass your test or you're just sort of, you know, feeling like you don't want to continue driving, you can just hand in your license and they'll give you a, um, a certificate or something, I think. And then along with that, you get your discounts for your various whatever you want. Well, are not you, whatever you want. Is everyone in agreement here that old people shouldn't drive? Okay. Well, my grandfather got old in his 80s. Yeah. We had to stop him from driving. He, he was could, just he could not hear and he could not see. But how did he get his license? Like, how, don't you have what to do, do a, a seeing test and a hearing test? Yes, but what when age? you have yeah, when you, you have a hearing aid on and you hear the person next to you giving the answers, it's easy. To uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. A E F. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's unbelievable. Well, Were that's... you the person giving the answers? No. <laughs> I was the one in the car room once praying to God that we get there. Because, <laughs> like, always we never let him drive by himself, so one of us would go with him. <laughs> yeah. And it was like the unlucky draw. <laughs> oh, man. So one of us, me or my older cousin, would go in the car with him. And we'll be driving with him. I've got my hand on the handbrake. I'm ready to jump on the steering wheel if I need to. Yeah. To make sure he gets there safely. Yeah. And I get there How safely. fast is he going? Oh, he's not going too fast. I wasn't too, <laughs> no, I wasn't too concerned about speed. I was more concerned about him hitting a parked car. Oh. How about you guys? I guess I guess this is a temporary problem, isn't it? Because soon none of us are going to be driving. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I see where you're going. But mm. no, I think I, when you think about driving, like it does, I guess it does require, you know, f as you say, like you do a, see a seeing test. Well, in England, you have to like view a license plate, I think, I think from 60 feet away and be able to read it. So like there are physical things that you have to be able to have to drive. And I, but, over, over your life, like the physical ability changes. Mm. So it makes sense to retest. But yeah. As you get older, doesn't your reaction time change as well? Well, exactly. Yeah. And so this says that a large uh, population in the screenings don't identify people whose mental health deteriorates quickly. And so a lot of them believe why this is why so many accidents involve um, elderly patients confusing like the brake with the accelerator, I, for instance. I think in the, is it in Australia they're trying to they have to redo their P's like the the test the the actual driving test they have to redo mm, it I don't know. at a certain age. Yeah, I think they should. That'd be the safest option, just because. And I think it should be done on a yearly basis. Uh, at what you age? Like to redo your um, at, at 70, you, 75. Okay. If you did your driving test now, would you pass? Fail. Fail. Yeah. Fail Same. hard. Yeah. But they Same. the way they test it, they don't they wouldn't test it the same. It's not like as strict. It's like are you safe? But the I think the bar's lower when you, when the, well, the way they do it in England one where they sort of give you a score. You can when you're older, it's not by law, but you can take a test and they sort of tell you if they think you should drive. It's like a recommendation. Oh. But the oh. recommendation isn't as strict as like what it would be when you first start to drive. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. So that's, it's like a, it's, yeah. That's makes interesting sense. because the, if you think about it, like the purpose of the initial test is to see if you're capable of driving. So to lessen those standards is saying, yeah, well, you know, maybe you didn't need to be able to do all that to drive. No, because they've already been driving for so many years. They don't need the same like road rule type yeah, instructions. For, uh, what, I would, what I would imagine, for example, are things like, how you check your mirrors and stuff, they'd probably be more lenient on. But the reason that they check that you do that is because that's the safest way to drive. 
Yeah. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Like the, yeah, the, yeah, everything within saying. a driving test is there for a reason. Yeah. So to yeah. remove some of those checks is just like saying, well, they're, maybe they're not that important or maybe we need to be more strict with the older people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get what you're saying. Well, this one, if you hand it in, it's actually called a driving graduation certificate. <laughs> and I'm graduated from no longer driving. <laughs> this certificate also provides 50% discounts on buses and monorails, which is quite a big discount. Yeah. Um, and you get 10% off all taxi rides and meals at certain restaurants. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as I said, the family also get the Ooh, same. Nice. Um, I feel like that's your last discount, last bit of independence, right? Yeah, they're taking it away from you. Like your driver's it license. Is. It's yeah. It's your like last Maybe. piece of. Because once you can't drive no more, you can't go where you want. So you always rely on someone else taking it. Yeah. Away. Especially yeah. like, it depends where you live as well. Especially if you don't live in like a city with good. Infrastructure like yeah. public transport yeah. was. Yeah. It must you, be tough. Like if you lived out in like a town, a small town, or villages or farms and stuff, and you can't drive, that is a really big deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's put it like big deal. You're, everyone's eighty now, and they're saying mm -hmm. we're taking the driver's license. How do? You, how are you taking that? What do you That's mean? A, like you're eighty. I was about everyone's to ask you the same thing. We're, yeah, we're about to take away your license. They go, you can't drive anymore. Bang, no license. I'd be devastated. I'll be in a retirement home. If I home, thought I that I care. could still drive. You but reckon then... you wouldn't care? I'll be in a retirement home. Uh, but okay, let I'm me ask them. you a question. Would you let an 80-year-old drive your children around? Let's no. say they're looking after them. Yep. Well, <laughs> do, you know the, do you know the reason I say yes? Why? You're going 20 kilometers an hour? Because just thinking about 80-year-olds, our grandparents are over 80 and granddad, our perfect oh yeah like, see, i've been in a car with him recently like i would be perfectly happy with him driving okay anyway. Depends that makes on the sense all right let me change the yeah, age 90 okay my grandma okay. is eight eight low 80s and i wouldn't want her driving at all for her own sake yeah. let alone with my kids or something in a car I, I think, think age is a hard on. thing to say. Yeah, okay, I think age is a hard I thing to say, yeah, because my granddad's very with it. Yeah, it depends on how they are yeah. as well. Yeah, because some grandparents but if you, grandparents if you were to switch it, it, it would be granddad, yeah, grandma, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get you. Mm -hmm. So do you think if you were... Why is right, everyone not in the, the head? Well, I would, I would like if they're about to take it off me, I'm going. I'm going. I'm taking the car. One <laughs> you're last like, I'm you're going. speeding one, out of there. One, one ten down the arrest freeway. Me. Bam, bam, I've always want to be arrested. <laughs> hey, hey, Siege, <laughs> police <laughs> street. What car do you have? <laughs> to oh, IKEA. I go Siege. <laughs> one minute warning. Siege, church, <laughs> church street exit. I'm gonna pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> We're going through. What car are you driving, Dev? <laughs> oh, whatever. RX seven. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> 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 the funny thing is, got, at that age, you're in a chair by himself, IKEA making the sounds from right? his mouth. Well, what was that, Maxie? <laughs> you need to have a big boot for your IKEA trip. That's right. <laughs> Whatever the car is. <laughs> Lead, you go to IKEA one last time. <laughs> Alex, it sounds fast, but I'm only going, I'm only going 40. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not the that's not the engine. Is that just CJ next to you making yeah. noises? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, there's a brilliant video uh, that went around this week of a guy. He's on. It's two guys on a moped, and they come around the corner, and you can hear them coming around the corner. And as they drive by, you just see the guy in the back. He's got a trombone. <laughs> no no way. Way. Oh, that is amazing. That's so funny. <laughs> that is brilliant. <laughs> I want to do and that now. <laughs> that was fantastic. Word. Okay, everyone, keep listening to the B Side Word. Rate, review, leave comments, subscribe, like our Instagram page, like our Facebook page, tell your friends, share. Bye. <laughs>